This is my Vivo honey extractor. I made a video previously about it, um, how I beefed up the, the legs and the feet to make it more stable. Well, after uh, processing about 10 gallons of honey, which isn't very much, um, decided it was a lot of cranking, so decided to electrify it. <clears throat> so what I've done originally on this unit, this angle head is facing the opposite way. This shaft is going down. This is a 2.5 to 1 reduction. So every one hand turn of the handle, the basket turns two and a half times. So you don't have to turn the handle very fast in order to make the barrel turn fast. Well, the problem with that is this electric motor doesn't go that slow. It needs to turn maybe 50 RPM to even get going. So I had to flip this over the other way. So I made this bracket. So now every one, uh, every two and a half turns of this shaft turns the basket one time. This is a variable frequency drive. And this is a three-phase quarter horsepower motor. What a variable frequency drive does is take normal AC power, in this case it's single phase, 120 volt, converts it into DC, and then inverts it back to AC, three-phase. So uh, this motor is, is a three-phase motor. What that does is it adjusts the speed of the motor by changing the frequency of the power or the electricity feeding it. A, a typical motor um, in the United States, three phase, we have 60 cycle power, so it turns at a given RPM, usually 1800 or 3600 RPM. If you cut that frequency in half, let's say 30 cycles, then this motor will only turn at 900 RPM. If you change it to 10 cycles, it will change by a factor of 1 6, you know, somewhere around 200 RPM. So, <clears throat> by adjusting the frequency coming out of here, you can adjust the speed of the motor. There are other ways I could have done this. I could have used what's called a universal motor. A universal motor is one that can run on either AC or DC because it's got a commutator and you change the speed of that using a uh, rheostat and that's like the, the type you see in a sewing machine the, the foot pedal on a sewing machine, it's a rheostat changes the speed of the motor. Uh, the problem with that is trying to find a motor big enough uh, universal motor big enough, they get really expensive. These three phase motors, um, this one's 208, are relatively inexpensive in the surplus market. I believe I spent $45 for this motor. Same thing with the uh, variable frequency drive or VFD. That, this is a surplus unit um, from Automation Direct. Like I said, single phase input, 120 volt, you can get them single phase input. 208 volt, 480 volt, three phase input, you know, whatever whatever you want. And then they're rated by the horsepower. This thing here is a one horsepower drive. This is only a quarter horsepower motor. When this motor's running, it only draws about 0.8 amps. So it's it's uh, barely loping along. So now I'll uh, plug it in here and kind of show what happens, as soon as you plug it in, the drive comes on. It's currently in the stop mode. So if I hit the start button, okay, now it's started, but I have a uh, speed control on the top. I don't know if you can hear that, but that sound is the, the sound of the frequency being put into the motor. Now what I've done here is the I've used these um, drive couplings. Um, the drive couplings have a little, I'll zoom in here in a little bit, have a little piece of plastic in between them that absorbs 
some of the twist. Um, it's used in a lot in uh, CNC control stuff. So I had a, a 0.46, uh, actually this was a half inch shaft output and this thing was, uh, coming out of here was 0.46. So I made a uh, 6 and 7 inch shaft, I turned it down to the appropriate size on both ends so that I can connect these two together. There's a 90 degree bracket here that's attached to the center frame of the honey extractor. This is the, the backbone of it. This was what originally was mounted to, the uh, hand crank was mounted to. And then I've got another angle bracket that comes up here and across the top and attaches to this one. So I've got essentially got a box. Now if I take out the two nuts over here and the two nuts here and pull the bolts out, this whole unit comes off, allows me to take everything apart and clean it. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see the finer details. Okay. So now you can see this uh, universal, I mean this uh, angle drive, speed reduction. This is a cheap Chinese unit. I don't know how long it's going to last. The uh, gears in it didn't look very robust. That's another reason for going to a uh, VFD is I can start it very slowly, very gently, and there's not a lot of... Uh, wear or uh, torque on this angle drive. I'll turn that back off. So I've got these drive couplings. I got those from eBay. I think they're about eight dollars a piece. One on each side. It gets me, the main reason for this is it allows me to pull the thing apart and also for taking up any slop if I didn't have this perfectly aligned. It, uh, it works out for that. Okay, I'll try and hold the camera still. It's pretty hard to do. These are individual pieces of aluminum that I welded together. This one here was my first weld. It, I know anyone out there that knows welding that looks like a not very good welding job. And my excuse has been a year since I welded aluminum plus some of these parts were anodized which makes it a little harder to weld over here you can see this weld a little more proud of that weld uh, that looks a little better so there's three pieces here that I welded together up there across here and then a little piece down here actually that's four and then I just bent a 90 degree bracket these are all this is an inch and a half wide and these brackets are an inch and a half wide. I bolted them. These are the original bolts that were holding everything together on this frame. I reused those bolts. I made a uh, mounting flange here for this motor. So I can bolt the motor to that and then this thing bolts to here. You can see a little two bolts there that holds this plate on which the motor is attached to. And then the VFD itself, uh, if you can tell, but there's an aluminum plate underneath here that's also mounted to here with a couple bolts. So this is what the VFD looks like. Um, because of the sunlight, you can't really see the display, but it tells you what's happening. So I'll turn it on. Not very exciting. You can see the barrel turning. You kind of get an idea for uh, this is turning three times as fast as the drum. That's about uh, only about 5% speed of the motor. If I go much faster than this with the uh, the tank, 
not anchored to the ground, it'll start to vibrate. You wouldn't want to go much faster than this anyway, extracting honey, especially if you've got natural comb. Plastic uh, foundation will hold up a little better. Oh, the other thing that uh, a VFD does, it has a braking action. So I'll show you what that, what that means. So we're turning this fast. I'm going to turn the VFD off. And you can see the drum continues to turn. It'll coast down. It, it's uh, just all the friction and everything is what's stopping it. Okay, now I'm turn it back on again. Now with it on, if I turn, let me go a little faster. Now if I turn the speed down, I don't know if you can hear it, but the motor will break and turn off the drum or turn off the basket. So if you need to slow it down, the thing you got to be careful of is if you slow it down too quickly, uh, you can trip the VFD. You, you generate electricity as you break it, and that could exceed the amperage of the, of the uh, VFD here. So this is my motorized honey extractor. I'm quite happy with it. It came out a little cleaner than I thought. Uh, a little narrower. Uh, I can still get the lids on. That was the, one of the main things. I didn't want to have to leave the top off. That's, that's about it. I'll zoom walk around here. You can see what the other side looks like. Pretty simple.